Ladies and gentlemen, dear friends, excellencies, just a few words um, at the end um, of this very long day. We had um, 900 participants speaking today, uh, around 150 sessions, maybe the largest online meeting uh, held by any organization so far. Uh, a very interesting day. We started in the morning, ladies and gentlemen, with the Secretary General of the United Nations, Antonio Guterres, uh, who gave us um, his view on the world and how the world is moving. Um, I think um, kind of um, a pessimistic view. Um, of course, um, the UN um, trying to promote um, multilateral thinking, um, uh, global coordination, but we see that um, there are many other you know, factors in the world as rising populism, protectionism, nationalism, and of course, COVID is still around. Uh, we experience the first phase, uh, uh, we move in the second phase, and maybe it's uh, a third phase um, coming as well. So, um, yeah, so the, the current state of the world is uh, quite gloomy, but um, I would like to call on uh, Gary Baker, who is the editor-at-large of the Wall Street Journal, who will be our rapporteur uh, at this session, and uh, telling us about uh, his views and uh, where the world is moving. And at the end, I will call on uh, Xiao Enqi, who is the CEO of Run the World. Uh, that's the platform we are using today. Gary. Thank you very much indeed, Frank, and thanks everybody for uh, listening. Um, uh, I know I uh, had initially hoped to uh, be able to chair a panel uh, with a number of people, but for a number of reasons that wasn't able to happen. Um, I know we're probably all a little nervous these days about hosting discussions, having watched the presidential debate uh, on Tuesday night here in the United States. I'm hoping, I didn't manage to see all of your panels, Frank, but I hope maybe they were all conducted in a slightly better better temperament than that one was. <laughs> not exactly a model for discussion around the world. Look, just very briefly, and, and again, it's a great privilege for me to have this chance to speak to you. Um, I'm here in New York. I'm here with the Wall, I'm the editor at large of the Wall Street Journal. And I spend a lot of time talking to people and more importantly, listening to people and writing uh, and, and, and broadcasting about these big topics that you've been discussing. And I wanted to leave you really at the end of the day. I know you've got more discussion still to come, but, but I want to leave you at the end of the day with a couple of thoughts about many of the things that you've been discussing and you've been hearing today. Um, and in particular about the world, how the world is going to change as a result of these extraordinary events that we've been through for the last nine months now, the, the COVID uh, epidemic in particular. I know we've all been grappling with this. You've been grappling with this in your panels, Every, I, everybody all the time. I, as an employee, as an employer, as a commentator and as a thinker, we're all thinking about how our world is going to change as a result of COVID. And I want to, I want to make a couple of observations that, you know, maybe slightly provocative, but I think, uh, you know, I think at least worth thinking about, even uh, there's so much that we don't know about this yet, even at this stage. Um, I think it's worth thinking about what some of the long term implications will be. And I think firstly, you know, I think I, I would generally go along with the view that a lot of people have expressed that the impact of COVID is obviously going to change the way in which people think about um, relations uh, between companies and more importantly, between countries and individuals and people around the world. I, I do think that the disruptions we've seen to supply chains, uh, the tensions that we've seen that have arisen, particularly between the United States and China over issues to do with the origins of the virus, the handling of the virus. I think all of this is trend tending to accelerate and to accentuate the trends we've seen towards um, a greater emphasis on nationalism, populism, um, emphasizing uh, one nation, nations first individualism. I don't think it's, I don't think we're back to the 1920s or the 1930s as some people fear, but I think we are going to see COVID have an accentuation of that. The second factor I think globally that COVID is going to accentuate is populism in its, in its larger sense. Because I think one of the things we've seen already with the impact of this crisis is the way in which it has enormously enhanced the power of the already powerful. It's striking how many companies in the world, the big companies in the United States, where I am particularly, how much bigger and more powerful they've grown, whether they're the big tech companies, big retailers, others. There's been this divergence. People talk about a K-shaped economic recovery. And I think that's very true. The big are getting bigger and more powerful. The weak are getting weaker and, and, and less powerful. And I think that is going to be a trend that, again, which has been going on for some time, this concentration of power in the hands of small, large, small number of large companies, I think that's going to continue. And I think that combined with the growth of government that we've seen in COVID, COVID has led to demands for a larger, much larger role for the government in, 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 in the economy, in healthcare, in, in assisting people who are in trouble. Those two things, I think, are going to result 
in, again, a further accentuation of the trends towards populism we've seen. People will feel less and less empowered by large companies, big companies, big tech companies, big global organizations, big governments, governments that have so much power over their lives. Uh, I think people are going to feel that this sense of uh, disempowerment, this sense of disenfranchisement, of alienation that people have been feeling for a long time as a result of things like globalization and the way we've seen the world develop over the last 30 years or so, I think COVID is going to accentuate that. So I would expect, just in summary, and I know I only have a couple of minutes, I would expect, and it's not a particularly um, happy story to tell, but I would expect that as we emerge from this crisis over the course of the next year, look out for those trends that we've seen already as I say, in, uh, at work in the global economy and in global societies and politics, look out for those to accentuate. accentuate. And whether or not, whatever the politics are, you know, and we're here, we're a month away in the United States from a presidential election. For what it's worth, I think, you know, probably right now, it's, it's Joe Biden's presidential election to lose. And I know Joe Biden is committed to reversing many of the things that Donald Trump has done. I think you'll see with particularly issues like relations with China, um, I think you'll see with issues to do with the role of the big tech companies. I don't think there will, although there'll be many differences between the Biden administration and the Trump administration, I don't think many of those issues are going to change fundamentally. And I think you will see the pressure, even on a Democratic president, to take a tough line with China, to take a more, if you like, America first uh, approach, even though he won't put it in those terms. I think the domestic political pressure is going to work in that direction. So I think rather than covid representing some huge break with the past and sending the trajectory of global economics and geopolitics uh, off in a new direction, I think it will have the effect overall of accelerating those trends. And whether it's Brexit, whether it's the tensions within the European Union, whether it's tensions between the United States and China, I really only see those getting more extreme, becoming exacerbated over the next three, five, ten years. Whatever the national politics are, I think those are the underlying trends that are going to very much define the way the world works in the course of the next few years. Um, I could talk for much longer. There's many more interesting, uh, but there are many more interesting people with much more interesting uh, ideas than mine, and I know you want to hear from them. So uh, I just want to say thank you very much for giving me the chance to speak, and um, please do contact me. I always love to hear from people and get a sense of what you think, but, but I think that, to summarize, that would be my view of the way the world is headed as a result of this crisis of last year. Rather than turning back, I think the world is going to continue in the direction that it was on over the last few years. Great summary, uh, Gary. And uh, as I say, it's not a very happy moment in, in history, but it's a very realistic judgment you're giving us. Uh, I think uh, a very uh, difficult time uh, ahead, but uh, I think there's also hope and, and optimism, uh, especially what we've seen after this meeting. There's so many initiatives coming up, you know, on, on, on climate change, on a new form of capitalism, and on, on dialogue and, and global collaboration. And I think that's what we are for here. You want to connect uh, the private and, and the public sector, uh, more engagement. Um, and uh, I think globalization is here to stay, but it will be more an inclusive globalization. Let me call on you, uh, Xiaoyan, for your uh, final words and uh, how you see the world, the digital world. Yes, uh, well, thank you so much for having me, and Gary, that's extremely insightful. Um, I don't have that much insight to offer as a global trend, but I do want to share my personal story and the around the world story. You know, I started the company around uh, 15 months ago. Uh, it was before COVID. At that time, uh, my mom was a doctor in China. She has never been to an international conference before. So she went to uh, Chicago physically, flew there um, after getting visa for weeks and you know, uh, weeks of travel and everything. Um, she arrived in Chicago, met another doctor from Dubai. It turns out they shared the same rare patient case. So she was able to bump into that doctor in their cocktail party offline um, and figure out what she wants to do with her patient, uh, which ended up really helping her figure out the treatment plan of a really endangered patient that saved somebody's lives. Um, and she was telling me that was her first international conference because just, it's just so hard for her. She's been in medicine for 35 years, never had any opportunity um, to attend an international conference and would not have any further opportunities to fly because just too much work. Um, that's when we start the company. I was more thinking, is there any way I can help people like my mom in China to meet another doctor from Dubai who shared the same case, patient case? That would be so cool. Um, so that's kind of why we started the company is trying to digitize the whole experience of having a conference, meet somebody who shared the same expertise. And we hope that that probably will solve us uh, a lot of problems. Um, at the very beginning of when we first started the company, um, no one really believed in the idea because they thought the idea of going to a conference online entirely digitally uh, seems like a stupid idea uh, and is not really effective. Um, so we were having a lot of trouble explaining to people how things should work and how things can work. 
um, I think the, 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 the COVID obviously was a sad thing for, for humanity, but at the same time, it, it somewhat um, helped a little bit um, explain to people why they need it. And they, that's, n- that doesn't need to be explained anymore. Um, that was March time in April. So we launched the product the week before COVID. And we kind of instantly see a lot of interest uh, from, from, from people all over the world. Now we're living in a very different world. Uh, at the very beginning, uh, when we first launched the product, everybody is trying to replicate what we see, uh, you know, what, what, what they experienced offline, trying to move everything online as it is. Um, and now we're seeing a very different world uh, in that people are no longer regard online events as a uh, risk mitigation method uh, for COVID. Uh, they are regarding online events as a new way uh, for them to continuously invest uh, in connecting people. So the and, uh, trend, China, uh, uh, I think... Uh, really, uh, uh, digital is, is a new normal, and uh, yes. I think that's what we all see. And uh, as we do more and more connections online, so it's a very interesting world we are living in. It's like yes. a digital world, but also a very frightening world, what uh, Gary said before. As we have moved on to the next panels, I just want to take the occasion to thank uh, all our partners, all our supporters, but especially also the United Nations. Uh, we held this meeting on the sidelines of the UN General Assembly, and a lot of heads of UN organizations joined us, including the Secretary General uh, himself. But I want to say that uh, the stars uh, are you, you know, participants, the speakers, and uh, thanks so much for all your commitment, and thanks so much for all your support. So um, uh, let's close uh, uh, this session, and uh, I invite you to, to join the next panel. Thanks so much, uh, Gary. Thanks so much, Shaoyin. Thank you.